So this is a type of um, container that they kind of make people use to sell pre-rolled joints in. Very wasteful, almost impossible, well, pretty much impossible to recycle, by the way. Um, so people who are involved in the marijuana industry, I really wish you would look closer at sustainability issues. Okay, but moving right along. Um, Terrapin Care Station. I don't know what that is. I don't know. I don't know what it means that people throw these out. And in this case, I took a photograph of it. I figured that maybe the numbers on it were relevant. So in this case, the number. Um, now I don't know if that's true or not. But it, it, the number twenty is judgment. Ten is the wheel of fortune. O seven speed. Nineteen the sun. O four the emperor. C O seven. Seven is the chariot. Um, I don't know. I, you know, I don't know if that's what, what, what it's about. I think it's about the actual um, dispensary, Terrapin Care Station. And I think that's why it was placed in this way with this rolled out like that. This was bought from a dispensary in Portland, obviously. So we just Google Terrapin Care Station because, hey, drugs are legal and it's really easy to get more information. And you don't have to go underground and deal with all this underground crap. And um, who knows what's going on behind the scenes kind of thing. But sometimes you still don't know what's going on behind the scenes. So what is a terrapin? I didn't even know. But, I, you know, the last image that I took was a safety pin opened up. Terra, I believe, is a word that means earth or land. And pin, I already said, it means to pin someone or, to, you know, to pin someone down, basically, like a wrestling move. So this is like pinning down the earth, Right. So this is another, like, I had a dream where I'm dreaming about someone named Michael Noland. No land. Terra pin. Pinned land. Some, there's something to hear about land being pinned, being, um, and I think deceptions connected with land or promises of land. Anyway, what Terra pin actually is, is a turtle. So that also is interesting. It connects to that dream I had about the turtle car. It connects with the idea of Turtle Island. It's one of the words they use to refer to us. Um, like a, you know, a reptile type animal in a shell and all of this stuff. But I think all of those meanings are significant in the name of this business, which is a Colorado business. So Colorado is one of the main states, as I mentioned, that seems to have given me problems, at least that I noticed as far as people following me around and things. So my neighbors all had cars, nice cars. From Colorado parked in their parking lot. They told me they were Mormon, which would suggest connections with Utah. Um, so I'm not really sure why everything around me was Colorado. Actually, neighbors on both sides had Colorado license plates in that neighborhood. Okay, so this, it doesn't take long to look at this website to understand that there is massive massive, massive money behind this business. And in fact, this is true of a lot of cannabis businesses. There are some major investments going on in cannabis because there's no way these guys just made all this money, you know, out of nowhere. Um, this place, I think, even actually grows. They're, you know, so they're not just a dispensary. They're actually a grower slash dispensary. And so that what I was seeing was a cannabis container with this label on it, because I, I actually was under the impression that all the cannabis in Oregon was grown in Oregon, but obviously that's not true. So there's some sort of interstate commerce going on with cannabis. I don't really know the details about that, but that's what that looks like to me. But so if I click about us, I find that it was form, founded in 2009 in Boulder, Colorado. And it has um, training programs and a staff of nearly 250 people. That's a lot of people for a business that has to be pretty new. I think. I mean, this, this had to have been majorly funded. So the guy who runs it, his name is Chris Woods. He's a pretty young guy. So I don't know how all this, he got it, came into all this money. I don't know if he was just independently wealthy. Um, said graduated from Pennsylvania State University. 
ran competitive track and so forth and so on. But I guess what I want to say about this other than all of this stuff, I mean, obviously something's going on with this place, is if you look at menus and locations, see there's Folsom Street and Boulder, 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 let's see, Denver, Longmont, Colorado, Aurora, Colorado on Mississippi Avenue. So now there's that name Aurora again. 33rd Avenue in Aurora. Now that, those are two ding dings right there. Aurora and 33rd and even the 11-9, right? 11-9 East 33rd. They use a T with these sort of wings on it as an um, icon. So, you know, this idea of the bird, the T shape and the bird together, you know, there might be leaves or there might be wings, I don't know. But, um, you know, there's a car called a Thunderbird or a T-Bird. So the idea of T being restriction and the bird, all those things um, come up again and again and again in this... I guess it's Masonic iconography. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know why. I don't know why this place is important other than the Colorado thing. Always, I always thought the Colorado thing was entirely about beer companies, but it might also be connected to stuff like this because this this apparently has been around since two thousand nine. That's that's when I got together with Chris two thousand nine. 